Hi guys, I am super excited for today. In fact, I've been looking forward to this day for weeks. If everything goes according to plan, today is the day I'll be able to hook up my fridge and put in the sink. That'll be a big step towards finishing the galley. So enough yammering on, let's get started. Yesterday, I applied the last coat of paint to this, and this is the shelf that the fridge will sit on. And just for the fun of it, I used this spray version of the two-part epoxy primer I normally use. And well, I gotta say, it turned out okay. Certainly good enough for something that won't see the light of day for years to come. I'm not used to working with spray paints and I was a little surprised at how low the viscosity of this paint is. Now I know the viscosity needs to be low in order for this to be sprayable. The only reason I was really surprised was because the non-sprayable version of this is quite thick. And the fact that this stuff is a little bit thick is one of the things I like about this paint. I've never had this stuff run on me and also it's quite easy to build up a thickness without too many coats. But I suppose if you just need to touch up a small area, this spray version, well, might be a good choice. I hope this still fits. The fit over here could be a little bit more snug, but yeah, it's just cosmetic. This is where the fridge is gonna sit. Let's just do a quick dry fit just to make sure that everything still fits. That looks good. But before I go any further, there's the small matter of the plumbing for the forward head. With a little bit of luck, this box should contain not only the new sink for the galley, but also the plumbing for the forward head. If everything goes according to plan, we'll get back to the sink a little later on today. But for now, it's all about the plumbing. I'm hoping I can just attach these to the old hoses and pull them through, but we'll see. Why oh why does everything always need to be so cramped? The old plumbing disappears underneath the cabin sole, but I've chosen a slightly different route. By running the plumbing straight across, it's going to be a lot easier for me if I at some point in the future need to replace that plumbing. If I let it underneath the cabin sole, I might have to remove the stove and the fridge and all kinds of stuff just to be able to replace that plumbing. Now it should be a lot easier. Just like the original plumbing, I plan on making all of my connections in here in the locker underneath the sink because that's good access. Looking at that old crusty plumbing, I think I'm going to take a minor detour from hooking up the fridge and just get rid of it. This is the pump for the pressure water system and I'd like to use that at some point before winter sets in to empty out the water tanks. So I figure I'll just leave whatever plumbing is hooked up to that and just remove the rest. It's very convenient that there's a hole right here. I can simply just cut this hose right here, lead that out through the hole, and then when I turn on the pump, it'll empty out the water tanks. Once everything has been cleaned up and those holes have been filled in and everything's been painted, it's gonna look really nice. And it's very satisfying to get rid of this heap of junk. That was a lovely little detour, but let's get back to what I really wanted to do today, the fridge. So I think the next step is going to be to figure out where to cut the hole in the new countertop to gain access into the fridge. I've lined the box up and there are a couple of things I've made sure of. Just for convenience, when I go to cut the hole, I've made sure that this is parallel with that. I've also made sure that when these locks that I'll be using are open, they won't extend out far enough to interfere with the lid opening. It would kind of suck to have to close these every time I need to get into the fridge. Well, let's move on to the next step. I've grabbed the measurements I need to figure out how large of a hole to cut in the new countertop. These are the measurements, so now it should just be a matter of transferring these onto the countertop. Okay, I almost messed up. So this line was supposed to be at 54.6 centimeters, but if you look over here, you might be able to see that it's at 56.4. Yeah, minor difference. Now that I've turned this into an expressionist art piece, it certainly looks like everything lines up better than it did before. 
So let's start cutting. You know what? When it comes down to it, I'm a big chicken shit. So uh, let's just do one more quick check to make sure that everything is square. 45.8 and 45.8. <laughs> I think this occasion calls for a new blade. Yep, that my friends is a pretty nice hole if I do say so myself. The next step is to cut the hole in the insulation that goes here. The line that I've traced is just a rough guide. Of course I need a bit of a lip for the lid to rest on and also I'm going to put on some teak molding. There are two reasons for that teak molding. One is of course that it'll hide this edge here and another one is that if I spill any water on the countertop it won't drain into the fridge. I don't have that teak molding around the opening for the fridge aboard Obelix and it is ridiculously annoying to dump a ton of water into your fridge. So the teak molding will take up 5 millimeters, and I figure another 1.5 millimeters for that lip, so that brings us up to 2 centimeters. And that means the opening into the fridge is basically going to be the size of this blue area here, which to me is perfectly acceptable. You guys have already seen me cutting that foam insulation a bunch of times, so I decided to spare you. Ta-da! So this is basically what the fridge is going to look like. Of course, these exposed edges of foam here is a bit of an eyesore. Fortunately, when you buy that insulation, you also get these trim pieces, and these are used to hide those exposed edges of foam. Unfortunately, I've just realized that I can't hook up the fridge today. I need to adhere these onto the foam. I also need to caulk inside of the fridge. So, yeah. What I can take care of are these and the caulking and I can also put in the sink. This stuff is quite easy to cut if you've got a knife that's sharp. Perfect. To adhere these trim pieces to the foam I'll use the exact same type of Sigaflex I used in the video where I built the box. Only this time I managed to get my hands on some of the white stuff. Tomorrow that should be good to go. Figuring out where to cut the hole for the sink is going to be a lot easier if I just trim the countertop. And that was the end of my Sunday. I made a mistake and you might have caught it there at the very end of what you just saw. We'll get back to that mistake in the next video. I decided to quit while I was still ahead before I accidentally cut too big of a hole for the sink or something stupid like that. I know I've said this before, but in the next video, I'm gonna hook up the fridge. Or at least I hope to. In the next video, I'll also take a look at what's inside of this odd looking tube here behind me and a bunch of other stuff. I plan on publishing that video on Sunday, so stay tuned for that. I'm sorry about this video being a little bit short, but that's just the way it turned out. Okay guys, that is gonna be it for this video. See you! Yukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. Please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order. Yeah, do you got it? Give it a tea. Oh, do it a tea. Oh, do you got it, Basin? Yeah, let's go.